Hello and welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. I have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. That's why that Q&A button is Perfect. You can direct your questions, by the way, to an individual school, a couple of schools, or all of our representatives to answer about their institutions. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening for Illinois students, so we hope you'll sign up for additional sessions to learn about more great schools. This presentation and all presentations are being recorded. You will be able to find it in about a week's time at that same website where you register, strivescan.com slash Illinois. Today, I'm excited to introduce our six schools. We'll be hearing from the University of Oklahoma, the University of Northern Colorado, the University of Wyoming, Texas Christian University, Colorado College, and the University of Arizona. I'm excited to welcome our first school, and that will be the University of Oklahoma. Scott? Thank you, Jennifer, and welcome everybody tonight to this group in the session. I am going to get my screen shared here so you can see my PowerPoint and we can go ahead and get started. So I hit my timer too. Uh, my name is Scott Hillman and I am with the University of Oklahoma. I am the admissions counselor for all of Illinois. I'm based regionally in Chicago, so I might be closer to some of you uh, than either of us are to campus. And some of you, if you're in central or southern Illinois, you might be closer to campus than I am. So either way, I'm happy to work with all of you and I will give you my contact information at the end. University of Oklahoma is located in Norman, Oklahoma. So uh, almost the center of the state, Norman is a suburb of Oklahoma City. So it is only about a 20 to 25 minute drive, uh, give or take to get downtown Oklahoma City from campus. So very easy drive. It's pretty much a straight shot from campus. Uh, so if you're looking to go explore Oklahoma City, uh, and go to concerts, explore restaurants, uh, take advantage of maybe internship opportunities that present themselves because of our proximity to OKC. We have all of that and more. The Oklahoma City Airport is also about a 20 minute drive from campus. So if you're looking to visit campus, uh, Oklahoma City is again, 20 minute drive away uh, for your flight destination. So uh, being in Norman is kind of the best of both worlds. It feels like that small college town, uh, but with the added bonus of being in the suburbs. So if you're looking for shopping, restaurants, movies, things to do, we definitely have a lot going on on campus, but there's things to do off campus as well. When it comes to our campus, we have 22,000 undergraduate students. So what we say is a mid-size or maybe an upper mid-size school, uh, definitely not a small school, but not super, super large. So kind of right in the middle. With 22,000 students, we do have an average class size of 32 students. So even though we have a lot of students there, we try to keep those classrooms more manageable in size uh, and on a nice scale. Only 4% of the courses that we offer have more than 100 students. So on the flip side of that, that just means that 96% of the classes we have are 100 students or less. So they won't be too large, they won't be overwhelming, which is really great for your learning environment. Our campus is extremely walkable, so getting around from class to class is great. You wouldn't have to catch a bus or drive yourself. Most students walk, but you could rollerblade, skateboard, scooter, you know, get a shorter set of wheels. Um, along with our class size, I just like also to share that our student to faculty ratio is 18 to 1. So if you need help from your professors, you definitely have a nice ratio that you're going to get to know them well. If you're looking to get involved with research, that would also be another opportunity to have with our faculty members. To get our 22,000 undergraduate students, we do get students from all 50 states. So not just Illinois, but from other parts of the US, as well as a bunch of countries from around the globe. You can see the map here, uh, the darker the shade of the state just means the more students that we're getting from those states. So Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, obviously Oklahoma, uh, Texas, um, but as far west as California and um, as far east as Virginia, Pennsylvania and more. But again, all 50 states are represented. So with that, we are 44% out of state or non-resident. So you wouldn't be the only one coming from out of state. So hopefully that eases any anxieties you have. You're almost as likely to meet somebody from out of state as you are to meet somebody from Oklahoma uh, themselves. We have over 170 undergraduate degree options. So there really is something for all students. Some highlight programs uh, would include meteorology, petroleum engineering, uh, musical theater, dance performance, aviation, international business, and a lot more. So if you're looking to psychology, to teaching, the health professions, uh, and more, we've got options for all of our students. 
and so a ton to explore. The link on the website or on, on the screen, I should say here, the, will be a list of all of our programs, but also has an assessment. So you can do the assessment to see what your interests are, and then it'll show you what majors might be of most interest to you. We are a tier one research institution. So if you're looking to get involved with research, like I mentioned, uh, we are among the most active research universities in the nation. So it's definitely a part of our students experience on campus. We have over 550 student organizations. So there really is something for all students to get involved with, whether it be student government, fraternities and sororities, volunteer based groups, multicultural student organizations, uh, and more. Uh, 550 is a lot, so there's definitely involvement opportunities for all students, and it's also very easy to start new organizations as well. Our students do study abroad. About 30% of our students go around the globe as part of their OU education. We have study abroad programs in 80 different countries and 200 different cities around the world. We are available for campus tours now, so if you are a high school junior or senior or a prospective transfer student, our Opportunities for visiting on campus are reserved for just those students currently, and we have dates through mid-May. Uh, once it gets closer to summer, we'll release the end of May, and then June, and then July. So hopefully you can come down and visit campus if you like. But we also know that not everybody is able to visit during uh, this pandemic in today's times. So we have a ton of virtual resources as well to check out. So there is a virtual campus tour for you to look into. We have an admissions webinar. Our individual colleges have webinars. You can learn more about business, more about engineering, and so on. You can sign up to meet individually with one-on-one -on -one OU students. Uh, so current students can get all the insider information about what it's like to be a student on campus now and more. So definitely check out our virtual resources. Follow us on social media at go to OU. We are on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Those are the main ones, uh, but it's also a great way to see the life of a student. We'll also do giveaways and we'll do important reminders as well. This is my contact information. So you will see my email address is scott.hillman at ou.edu. Uh, so definitely reach out to me if you have any questions and I am happy to work with you. So thank you so much for your time tonight. Great, thank you so much, Scott, for sharing about the University of Oklahoma tonight. Our next school is going to be the University of Northern Colorado. Thank you, Jennifer. And I'm gonna share my screen with everyone right now. So thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, hopefully you can see that right now as we're moving forward. So I am Dr. Dave Fedorchek. I am the Director of Admissions at the University of Northern Colorado. We are located in Greeley, Colorado, which to give you a sense is on the eastern part of the state, just outside of the mountains, about an hour from the Denver International Airport. So a prime location if you're looking for things outdoors and we have great access to the Poudre River Trail right near our campus. So lots of things both on and off campus. As you can see there, that's a, a view of our campus looking west. So uh, I wanna go into just some things about why students choose UNC. And so we are a public institution in the state of Colorado. We have roughly about just over 9,000 undergraduate students. But when you look at it back in 1889, when we were founded as an institution, we were founded as a state normal school. And usually most times when I talk to people about that, they have no idea what that means. So a state normal school means the foundation was based in education. So we have been an education school since the beginning. It's one of our top five programs at the institution. So something we're really proud of, but we're also a research institution. So if you're looking for that hands-on outside the classroom experience, that's where you're gonna get at UNC. We have some tremendous faculty members that are award-winning, but first and foremost, they are there to teach and engage with you. So they're gonna be able to have those opportunities both inside the classroom, outside the classroom, research, and also internship opportunities. So depending on what you're looking to do in study, we have over 100 different programs at the university. Some of our most popular programs are business, nursing, elementary education, psychology, and our sport and exercise science program. So really being able to engage you in all the different areas. We also have some excellent programs in our performing and visual arts. But once again, that access to faculty, I think is really key for us. So if you've ever heard of the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, um, obviously we are the UNC Bears. So I almost think we're a perfect size institution. So not too big, not too small, just right, real to engage you in those different areas. We're Division I in all of our athletics. So all those things that kind of come with a Division I school, we have those. We're in a great area. So the town of Greeley has over 100,000 people. So access to different things within the town and the city. So you'll never be bored if you want to stay here or if you want to get in the mountains for a weekend, you could go about an hour and 20 minute drive to the Rocky Mountain National Park. So it's a great place for you to be. We have some phenomenal alumni that are always here to connect with our students. And no matter what your major is, we have one of our alumni advisors who is in that career 
that could actually help you be able to move forward and look at what you're doing, explore if that's the right place. And also with our facilities on campus, we have actually 12 different research centers and institutes on campus. So we're here to help you to be able to figure out what you're looking to do, what different research areas you wanna be into. But once again, I think it really comes down to the people that are an institution. We're really a caring and welcoming environment. We have a very diverse student body. So just over 30% of our incoming freshman class identify as students of color. And also over 40% of our students are first generation students. So we are really impacting their lives, their family lives and the future to come for that family. So those are things we're really proud of at, the, at UNC. Looking forward as obviously why you choose that place and then also what's gonna happen when you're there. So these are some of the places where our graduates have gone on to work both in the state, outside the state. So no matter where you're coming from, so obviously with the students here in Illinois, I am your direct contact as well. So I'll share in the chat my information. I'm here to work with you and your family through your entire college search and selection process. So I'm here to help and support you. As you can see, there's six great universities in this chat tonight, and you have tons of options. And there's all different things happening at our campuses, but it's really helping you find that great fit. Um, but our students, 88% of them are placed in a job or graduate school after graduation. So your ultimate goal is to progress in your life. And that's what we've been doing with our students at UNC. We're really proud of that. Something else we're proud of, as I mentioned earlier, with the diversity we have on campus, we have 32 research and cultural centers on our campus. So no matter where you come from, how you identify, the beliefs that you have, we have some place on campus for you to feel comfortable, feel at home, and be able to connect with students that are like you and also students that are not like you. So that's our main goal is to help expand your horizons as a student and your thought process and what you're doing, but to set you up for that future in the work world, whatever that's gonna look like as we move forward from this pandemic. So I thank you for, for learning a little bit about the University of Northern Colorado. I look forward to any questions you may have for me. As again, I, as I mentioned, I will put my information in the chat for you. And just so you know, that is our mascot, Claws. Uh, we are the Bears. So hopefully you'll come to see us on campus because we are doing on-campus tours as well. So thanks for joining us tonight. Enjoy the rest of the presentations. Thank you so much, Dave, for sharing the University of Northern Colorado with all of our viewers tonight. Our next school today is going to be the University of Wyoming. Hello, thank you so much for having me this evening. It's correct, I am Haley Dungan with the University of Wyoming. Very proud to be joining today from Laramie, Wyoming. I'm here in my kitchen as we're still working a little bit from home, but very cool to be able to present on these modes and to be able to connect to so many entities on a virtual level. The silver lining certainly to cope. All right, so the University of Wyoming neighbors to our previous presenter, of course, Laramie is just right over the Colorado border. We are located in between two mountain ranges. As you can see in the background here, this is the snowy mountain range um, right in our back door. And then in our front door, we've got the bigger recreation area, but beautiful community, beautiful area. I'm a first generation college student myself. I also attended this institution and I rep the brand because I believe in it. I have no reason to rep it unless I do. So. We are a smaller campus, even though we're a little bit of a larger institution, a lot of opportunities. You'll see about 12,249 students on campus. What that means is a faculty ratio of 15 to 1 is going to provide you the opportunities as a research-based institution to meet with your professors, to develop that relationship. And then as you move forward, you join master's programs. You maybe join an internship. You would have already developed that relationship with a cohort of students that you were in class with. You already got to know your professors. So um, that conversation should have already began in your undergraduate and we want to set you up with that best base moving forward. Make sure that you're feeling confident because it is important, right? It's not just about the education you receive, it's about how you feel as an individual. So we're represented by um, all 50 states and 90 countries. Arguably Laramie, Wyoming is the most diverse city in the state of Wyoming. That intrinsically is because of the college itself. Um, we do host a uh, smaller class sizes, but that was, again, going to give you the opportunity to meet these different individuals. And then being a Wyomingite, of course, we love to take individuals in the outdoors. We love to show them what the state um, looks like, how beautiful it is, a huge conservationist. So um, if you're interested in climbing, you are 20 minutes from top tier climbing. It's right in our back door in Vitavu, um, as well, mountain biking fat biking in the snow. We have our national forest right behind us. And if you ski, there's a ski hill 30 minutes from our um, institution. It's called Snowy Range Ski for the price of a uh, pass for a lift for the day, as well as rentals using your student ID. It's about $70. So see a lot of individuals, unfortunately, pop that Colorado border to come over to ski. At least Laramie, we do have, have that for skiing. So affordable, great place for you to learn, um, great place for families as well to learn. So I love it. It's a great place. 
Now, we are Division I for athletics, and we encourage all students to attend all of these games. Uh, fun fact about the Mountain West, currently we have the most active alumni that are represented in the NFL, which is really fantastic. Um, University of Wyoming, little old Ohio, if you're familiar with Josh, Josh Allen with the Buffalo Bills, um, fantastic. But we also have over 300, or about 300 clubs and organizations. So if you're not interested in sports, perhaps you're interested in performance arts, um, art, writing, uh, sciences, you know, anything across the board, I'm hard pressed for you not to find an area that you're interested in in our campus. And if you're interested in starting your own club, you only need about four friends and a faculty member and you can do so. We also have student government as well as a fraternity and sorority row that's active. So we highly encourage our students to get involved there as well. It helps with community involvement efforts and uh, leadership. Now, 200 different areas of study, and we're not going to limit you to minoring and majoring. We have incredible staff that teach out this way because Wyoming is a unique area. And so individuals will come out here because they can focus on their studies, they can focus on themselves. They're not going to be competing against a ton of other people. Ultimately, that is why individuals are moving out west and moving to the state of Wyoming. Um, at this time, it's not always the worst thing in the world to have some space around you to focus on those uh, things that you're passionate about, you know. And so we have tons of opportunities um, funded, but one of the biggest that we're most proud of, we have the largest travel endowment in the United States for a single institution, single endowment, sorry, for a institution. So Lynn Cheney, our proud graduates of the state of Wyoming, so the University of Wyoming, sorry, and they established this to essentially encourage our Wyoming students to travel worldwide, but you can utilize this as an out-of-state student. Um, anything across the board from J-term traveling to uh, direct um, exchanges with other students, the most important thing is you'll pay your out-of-state resident tuition while you're doing so. Tons of scholarships that are included as well. I highly encourage students to check out our uh, study abroad options. Applying to the University of Wyoming will like to see the completion of the high school success curriculum. We try to make it very easy. Um, as long as you have a 3.0 and a test score, an ACT and SAT of 21 and 1060, we will be needing need to see a test score for the spring of this year. For fall, we're test optional, but moving forward um, for direct admittance, we like to see that 3.0 and then the submission of, of course, of your required materials. Um, scholarships that are available for our out-of-state students, you're going to be looking at the WUI, the Child of Alumni Benefit and the Brown and Gold Commitment. Most often, most students will qualify for the Brown and Gold Commitment. Highly encourage you to check this out a little bit closer, but as you can see, we award all of our scholarships based off of merit, based off of this grid. So you can see as early on upon application where you may fall, gives you an idea of where you can work to potentially um, elevate yourself into a higher portion of the grid so that you can receive more money. This is our cost estimate for undergraduate students for non-resident agency. It's about 32,362, but it's important to remember that 12,000 of that goes into room and into your meal plan. So in the sophomore year, you can expect about 12,000 that to drop. That can be utilized in the community to live wherever you would like. More often than not, students will meet their roommates in their dormitories and residence halls their first year, which we do encourage our students to live on campus. It's a great way to be connected. We are open right now currently for tours, so you can absolutely step onto our campus. Um, we're going through spring, encouraging to go through summer as well. And moving forward in the fall, we are anticipating in-person classes. We are moving forward with a traditional fall setting as you can expect at a college. So University of Wyoming moving forward, um, still probably be utilizing mask mandates, but we are looking at in-person classes, in-person tours at this time. And if you would like to learn more about the university and like to learn more about um, just Wyoming in general, Feel free, you can reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to talk. We can set up a Zoom appointment. Um, we can have a phone call, whatever makes you feel the most comfortable. But I'll admit, as Wyomingites, we're intimate. We're gonna wanna get you to talk to us face to face. So if we can help you, more than happy to do so. I wanna thank you again for taking the time tonight to join this fair and hope to learn uh, more about other institutions. Thanks. Thanks, Haley, so much for sharing today about the University of Wyoming. So we've heard from three great schools and we have three more to go. Just a reminder to our attendees, you've got that Q&A box. So think of some questions. It could be for any of the schools that are to come or to follow up on something that you might've heard earlier. As you can see, our next presentation is going to be from Texas Christian University. Jill. Great, thank you so much. Hi guys, thanks for joining us tonight um, to learn more about all of our universities. I would like to take a little bit of time to talk with you about Texas Christian University. My name is Jill. I am the admission counselor for seven states in the upper Midwest. Like Scott, I am a regional based admission counselor. Um, so I'm here to help you. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, I, I think something to really hit home about TCU right away is why so many students are drawn to TCU. Um, parents love our size. Um, 
guidance counselors love our size. We're medium size. We have under 10,000 undergraduate students. Students come from all over. And as you can see, out of all of the students coming from the United States, our third largest group of students is actually from the state of Illinois. So way to represent. <laughs> We're located, of course, in Texas, but Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth is a metropolitan area often associated with Dallas. Um, Fort Worth is on the west side of the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport and Dallas is on the east side of the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. Fort Worth is a great city and that's really important for high school students as they come to college. You want a city that's large enough so that you have those fun things to do but also places for internships and volunteer experiences and just you know, visiting museums, going to professional sporting events, all of those great things. Fort Worth is the 13th largest city. So to put that in perspective for you, we're smaller than Chicago, but we're larger than Milwaukee. We're larger than Indianapolis. We're even larger than Minneapolis and St. Paul pushed together. Great size as a backdrop for our students. Um, it, while the city of Fort Worth is really fun and our students utilize it a lot, there's a lot going on on our, our campus. I'm so sorry, my earbud just fell out. Hopefully you guys can still hear me okay. Um, it, we have a really active campus. So we have a lot of great fine arts events on our campus. You can get in free to all of the fine arts events at TCU. We are a division one athletic school. We're part of the big 12. We're the smallest school in the big 12. Um, and we're able, because we're a small school, we're able to let all of our students attend every single one of our home athletic events for free if they choose to do so. We have over 300 different clubs and organizations on our campus. We have a very active Greek life situation. So um, that includes a, a, a Christian sorority and a Christian fraternity, if, if that's something more to your liking. And then many of our students will be involved in volunteer work during their time at TCU. Um, another thing that makes TCU a really comfortable place would be that we feel like home. Um, part of that is because we really take a lot of time to plan your home. Our residence halls have been rated by the Princeton Review as number four in the country. Um, we have 16 residence halls for undergraduate students, and eight of the 16 do have first year or freshman students that can reside in all of the residence hall or at least a portion of the residence hall. Um, talking about the classroom experience, again, we're medium sized with under 10,000 students, but in our classroom, the average class size is about 27 students in a class. If you look at every full time student at TCU, for every 13 full time students, we have one full time professor who's there to help our students. And if you include me and other people who work at the university and don't teach, for every 4.5 full time students, we have somebody who's there to help you at TCU. We have a lot of different programs for um, academics at TCU. We have 115 different majors, but if you include areas where we offer minors and not majors in those areas, there are over 132 different areas in which you can study. Everything from ballet and modern dance to nursing, education, and even ranch management. Um, students, regardless of their major, will earn, uh, you know, about one third of their credits will be taken in our core curriculum, which is kind of like the general education requirement of their schools. So in your four years at TCU, about one third of your classes would be toward your major. Another one third would be toward maybe another major or your minor and electives. And that final one third classes toward that core curriculum. Speaking of the core curriculum at TCU, our students are required to take one religion class during their time at TCU. That's part of our core curriculum. Our title, Texas Christian University, is um, kind of a, it's just a signal toward our, our um, I, I'm losing my words here, but we're part of the Christian church. The Disciples of Christ is known as the Christian church denomination. And so that's our denominational reference. Students come from over 60 different faith backgrounds, and we have several different um, Christian-based uh, clubs and organizations on our campus. 
um, you can apply to become a, a horn frog. We have four different applications. Any of the four will work. We just joined the coalition application this past year. Um, we have three different deadlines, November 1st and then February 1st. And then of course we do have offer early decision as well. We're going to be test optional for next year and the following year. And we have a do no harm policy. So if you do submit test scores, we promise we won't, won't let those take away from your chances for admission or scholarships. The holistic review process, we're taking a look at everything. And I wanted to just remind you, my name is Jill and I'm part of the admission office. Would love to have your questions and I'll put our campus visit information in the chat a little bit later. Thanks for spending your time, guys. Have a great night. Great, thank you so much, Jill, for presenting on Texas Christian University. Our next school is going to be Colorado College. Cool. Hello, everyone. Got me okay, Jennifer? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so my name is Dylan Sanchez. I'm an assistant director here at Colorado College. Uh, I'll kind of take you on a brief walk through our campus today. And for those of you that, not had the, that have not had the chance to visit Colorado before, I'll start by saying that um, Colorado College is located in the heart of Colorado Springs. We're about 45 minutes to an hour south of Denver, kind of depending on the I-25 traffic. So um, you still have ac access to much of the state from Red Rocks and Denver Broncos football games and all that good stuff, but you're also going to be in the Olympic City um, here in Colorado Springs. So access to some really cool stuff, including the Olympic Training Center itself, was just a cool place to go visit. I'm a big sports guy, so I spent a lot of, a lot of time down there. But um, campus itself is about a five minute walk from the downtown Colorado Springs area. So you see a lot of our students and staff taking long walks to the local community, restaurants and shops all within the area. Um, especially on a good day like today, not so much like the last couple of days with the snow and everything like that. But it's a pretty common occurrence. We see over 300 days of sunshine a year on average. So I've lived in Colorado all my life. So I kind of know what to expect when it comes to snowstorms. As long as you bring your snowshoes, snowshoes to school, you'll kind of be okay. But uh, moving on to the campus itself, CC is small. Um, we're a private institution. We only offer 42 majors to roughly about 2,300 students. So our classrooms are actually really small. Um, only about 20% of our students come from Colorado. So there's a very diverse body of students, which is, I was very excited about uh, to, to find out when I started at CC um, just in November. I actually grew up here in Colorado. I went to a state college and then I've always known about CC, but I'm learning a little bit more about it. There's a lot to really, that really excited me when uh, looking for jobs and wanting to uh, get students excited about CC. Um, classes themselves are capped at 25. You'll never see a class larger than that, but more commonly our average class size is around 16 students. Um, I currently oversee the ambassador program here at CC as well. Um, so if you're ever interested in becoming a tour guide, of course, you can come and find me in a year or two. Uh, but you'll also, um, you'll also find that most of our, most of my, or I guess what I found from working with student ambassadors over the last month is that um, most of our, a lot of our students would be in, it'd be in classrooms in the single digits. A lot of my students have only four or five students in their classrooms. So what does that mean for relationships? Well, obviously that means you're gonna grow very closely with your peers and professors, but that's not terribly uncommon. Um, so what is unique about CC? Well, the most unique aspect is gonna be the block plan. CC is one of less than a dozen colleges in the United States that works on a block plan model. So we take our courses one class at a time. No English papers, math homework, and chemistry projects all due in the same week. You're gonna focus on one subject area at a time for three and a half weeks. Um, you'll stay in that class, like I said, for three and a half weeks. You'll take still four to five classes a semester, but you'll focus on one subject area at a time as you go. It allows you to dive more into your work a bit more hands-on and it allows you a little bit more of uh, intimate relationships with your professors and with your classmates as well. So um, another unique aspect with that is that our entire college is in class at the same time. That's what that means. All 2,300 students are in class from 9 a.m. to noon, Monday through Friday. So you don't have to worry about building your schedule every semester. You can expect the same thing. That also means if for any of you that have that fear of missing out, you're not going to really have to worry about that. I, I missed plenty of dodgeball tournaments because my team was always at the tournament when I was in class and, high, and while I was in college, but no longer like that at CC. Everybody's in class at the same time, which means everybody's in their extracurricular activities at the same time. Uh, so plenty of opportunities for that. At noon, all of our students are released and all students can live um, the college life that you kind of have always expected. Um, the classes themselves are a bit concentrated, right? You're learning a semester's worth of curriculum in less than a month, but we thrive on that environment. We've been doing this for 50 years as of 2020. Uh, so you trust us that this is a tried and proven formula in education. 
some quick, quick statistics for you about the block plan, because that's something my parents are always asking, um, retention rates and graduation rates and things like that. But 95% of our students, 95% uh, of our students return after their freshman year, 80% of our students participate in study abroad, and 50% of our students are study, participate in multiple study abroad options throughout their time at CC. It's absolutely unprecedented. 100% of our students um, will perform a field study. So this is our backyard. Um, Purple Mountain Majesty, written about Pikes Peak, is the backdrop for CC itself. Self. Um, so you're going to have plenty of opportunities, especially if you're interested in the sciences or any of the STEM fields, to spend a lot of time outdoors um, within your environment. So kind of enough about academics. Uh, we're running a bit short on time, right? I imagine I can kind of talk a little bit faster nowadays. But um, we're a class together. We have fun together. At graduation, all of our seniors get a bottle of champagne, and you pop the champagne at the doorsteps of Cutler Hall together. It's the oldest building on campus. It's actually older than Colorado itself. Um, it's the greatest tradition at CC. We offer trips to the Rocky Mountains. We have clubs and organizations with limitless resources to send you where you wanna go. Uh, we have a class called the Yachtacy Club, um, which is a classroom that will be spent on a yacht. Um, you'll follow the same path of the Odyssey and kind of read the book as you go. So some really unique classes that you'll get to be involved with involved with here at CC. And I'd be happy to tell you a little bit more about it and a little bit more about what our application process looks like. As a private college, it can be intimidating, but I wanna extend my contact information as well. And to say, we're here to advocate for you. Um, if you're interested in pursuing CC, I wanna be here to kind of show you a little bit about CC, show you the application itself. So please feel free to stay in touch with me. I work specifically with students in Chicago, Michigan, um, and Indiana. So feel free to stay in touch. I'll throw my information in the chat as well, but thank you all. Great, Dylan, thank you so much for sharing Colorado College. Our sixth school in this six by six is going to be the University of Arizona. Emily? Thank you so much. And thanks so much again for joining us tonight to learn more about all of these great schools. My name is Emily Martinez and I am the regional recruiter for the University of Arizona. Like some of my other peers, I am based in the Chicagoland area and happily serve as your connection to everything Arizona. So just to dive right in, the University of Arizona was founded in 1885, actually when Arizona was still a territory, wasn't even a state yet. Our campus is made up of one square mile. It's located in Tucson, Arizona. Everything that you need as a student is just a quick walk away. Um, 23 dorms, 20 colleges, over 35 restaurants, a movie theater, two rec centers, and even a post office. Everything you need is right there on our campus. We've definitely grown um, and continue to grow. We have about 35,000 undergraduate students on our campus. And if you throw in our graduate students, that's another 10,000. Um, so a very diverse, large student body compared to some of the other schools here. Um, but again, diversity is big on our college campus in terms of ethnicity, geography, the whole package. Over 40% of our students do come from out of state. In fact, we have students coming from every single state in the US. Illinois is our third highest recruited state. So a lot of students from this area make their way over to Arizona. Even though we are a larger university, we're still able to offer a very personal educational experience. Class sizes average between 20 and 29 students and our faculty to, or student to faculty ratio is 15 to one. And there are tons of advantages to being at a large public university of our size. With over 250 degree programs, we literally just to have about any program to meet your uh, educational needs. Some of our more popular programs include our nationally top 20 ranked public business college, our nationally recognized engineering programs, as well as our pre-health and medical science programs. Um, we're also very well known for our dance and fine arts programs. So you can see we have a wide range um, of excellent opportunities. We also offer big time opportunities um, to really enhance your experience and your skill set. In all of our majors, um, we are a top tier world class institution. We are ranked in the top 1% of universities in the entire world. Arizona is a premier tier one research one institution and a renowned member of the prestigious Association of American Universities. It's an exclusive title um, to about 65 colleges and universities. So from Harvard to Yale to UC Berkeley and to the University of Arizona. Um, and and that title is given because we have a lot of really great opportunities for our students focusing specifically on research opportunities. 
hat off the presses. Uh, the University of Arizona was just giving a new ranking. Um, we are ranked in the top 4% of all US universities in research and development. Um, and we have over $734 million in research expenditures each year. And that is available to you as a student, regardless of what major you choose, there's gonna be opportunities for you to really enhance your experience. Outside of the classroom, we have a very active student life. We have over 600 different student clubs and organizations to participate in. And our clubs range from academics to leadership, to student government, to special interests, to Greek life, to athletics and recreation, and everything in between. Um, Arizona is a division one school for athletics, part of the PAC-12 conference. My favorite student club to always point out is Zona Zoo. It is the official student section for our Arizona athletics, and it has been consistently ranked by ESPN as the biggest, loudest, and best student section in all of the Pac-12 conference. Go Cats! Another great way to connect with our campus is to actually live on campus. The University of Arizona, we do things a bit different for students. There are no housing requirements or restrictions. There is completely optional for first year students and all year students to live on campus or off campus. You get to choose. All 23 of our dorms house freshmen through seniors. So again, you get complete freedom in choosing what your Arizona experience will be like. Although it's not required for first year students to live on campus, over 75% of them do choose to do so. Tucson is an amazing town. It is definitely a college town. It offers a wide range of uh, activities, interests, social scenes. It offers a great art scene, electric shops, coffee spots, restaurants, concerts, festivals, and so much more. Uh, being from the Midwest, my favorite thing to point out is the gorgeous Tucson weather. It's an average school time temperature of 83 degrees and over 300 days of sunshine a year. What's not to like about that? If you do decide that you are interested in applying to Arizona, this is what you need to know. We do not require essays or personal statements are optional. Recommendation letters are not considered. Do not submit them. We are also test optional. Within Arizona, um, they do evaluate students a bit different. We are looking to ensure that you have completed these 16 courses. They're known as core courses by the time you graduate high school. We're also going to use the grades from these courses to calculate your core GPA. Only grades from these classes will be used through your junior year, and that core GPA will be used to determine your admissibility as well as scholarship consideration. We do offer merit scholarships for out-of-state students. They range from $1,000 up to $35,000 per year, offered for a total of four years. There is no separate application. When you apply to the university, you are automatically considered for these merit awards. And for the fall 2021 cycle, we are based on core GPA only. If you are a junior or younger, unfortunately at this time, we have not confirmed if that policy will carry forward. If you would like to continue to connect with us, I invite you to check out our virtual website. One of them that I want to point out is our Ask a Wildcat page. Every Tuesday on our Instagram page, you can hear from current students sharing their own experiences. That is going to wrap it up for me. I will be sure to add my contact information in the chat and thank you so much. Thank you so much, Emily, for presenting on the University of Arizona. We have reached the end of our six presentations, but we do have a little bit more time together and want to make sure that everyone who's watching can get the contact information they're looking for and be sure there aren't any last minute questions. So right now I'd love to invite each of our representatives to come back on camera. We're going to do a little Q&A before we um, finish our time tonight together. So our question uh, that we're going to start with is, what is your favorite um, campus event or tradition or something that's just really special to your student community um, in out of the classroom? Um, and so we'll start with the University of Oklahoma. So we'll start with Scott. And just remember, as the representative in front of you finishes, just feel free to turn on your microphone and answer away. And we'll just go through that same order. So thanks, Scott. Yes, so my favorite thing is just, our slogan is Boomer Sooner because uh, we are the Sooners. And so what I love is like when you see somebody in OU gear, whether it's on campus at an airport or somewhere else, doesn't have to be in Oklahoma, but around the globe, you yell out Boomer and they're going to yell Sooner back. I've definitely done that at multiple airports um, when I see people in OU gear. And it's a great way to meet other alums or other fans of our sport team. So uh, just saying Boomer Sooner is going to be my favorite way to connect with others. I would say for us at the University of Northern Colorado is the bonfire and fireworks that we have at every homecoming. Uh, 
well, I have a few, but uh, we have one tradition on campus and there's a dinosaur geological museum that we have, we host. I'm sure some of my representatives would probably reference something with football, but I'm, I'm being myself, I'm going to reference the dinosaur museum. It's fantastic. It's available for students to use for free, but outside we have a statue of Rexy. He's a, uh, a metal Tyrannosaurus Rex. Rumor has it, if you can lob a pine cone from the tracks of his feet that are planted before him, if you can lob it from there into his mouth, you'll receive all A's on your finals. So it's not an easy task to get that pine cone in Rexy's mouth. So you can do it. <laughs> We're the horned frogs. We're the only university in the world with the horned frog mascot. And so one of the most common questions I get is what is that thing you're doing with your hand? We have a really popular hand sign and it's a peace sign and then you bend it until it hurts to make the little horns of the horned frog and we go, go frogs. I think that's me, sorry. Couldn't find the mute button. Um, let's see. So like I said, I've only been with CC since November. So I'm still learning. So I've been with CC since COVID. So it's, I'm still learning a lot of the traditions. The only one that I've gotten to participate in so far has been the December graduation with our seniors. Um, champagne showers is what they call it. Call it. Think about LeBron James in the locker room popping champagne off. That's what it's like at graduation. Um, people just going crazy on the front line of Cutler Hall. Uh, but the second one that I'm really excited about that I grew up with here in Colorado is the CC University of Denver rivalry in hockey. We're building a new hockey arena on campus, um, just a walk away from my building where I work. So I'm excited to go see some hockey games. Big tradition in hockey here. At the University of Arizona, um, our campus itself is very flat, but we do have some desert mountains surrounding us. So my favorite tradition um, is related to our A mountain. Um, so there's a mountain about, I don't know, mile and a half, two miles outside of our campus. Um, and every night, um, the first or the, the night before our classes start, our students hike up to the top of a mountain and they paint over um, last year's painting, the, the block A, you can see it right there. Um, so they paint that into the, the side of the mountain, kind of signifying the start of a new academic year. And you can see it from anywhere in Tucson. Um, I love this question so much because it just gives a little bit of that extra sneak peek. And I hope everybody watching maybe thinks they want to go check it out or that they thought it sounded awesome and they could see themselves being a part of any of these uh, traditions or events. Um, we have time for one more question. And I think this is a great one for um, all of the representatives here. We're talking with students in Illinois and each of you are representing schools that are outside of Illinois. Um, and many of your schools do draw a number of students um, to, from out of state. And so what is the advice that you would give someone going through the college search process? in this time of COVID and in general with considering about taking a leap and maybe um, going on their college adventure a little farther from home. And again, we'll start with Scott. My piece of advice is to make sure that the schools you're looking into have multiple majors of interest to you. So even though you might have one program that you are kind of diehard on wanting to go off to college for, make sure that that school maybe has a couple other options that also sound good just in case um, that you don't go with that route. Case in point, I wanted to be a dentist, but I don't do well in science classes. So that route didn't last long for me. Um, so luckily the school I went to had lots of other options for me that worked as well. So that's my piece of advice. My piece of advice kind of goes off of what Scott's saying is you will be asked over and over again during this process, what do you want to major in? And I can tell you, I will never ask you that question. I want to say, what's your dream job or what do you care about affecting in the future. And then our job as counselors and admissions folks is to help you find the path to that point. And you have some great universities here that could do that. So don't put so much pressure on yourself to be coming out of high school and knowing what you want to do with the rest of your life, because I'm sure all of us never thought about admissions when we were sitting in your seat. Yeah, English creative writing major. So, you know, in Wyoming, there's like not a ton of writing opportunities yet. So, you know, you end up in, in missions. But um, I think my advice, and certainly, you know, this might not be as opportune um, for everyone, but I do think it's very important. COVID's made this restrictive, but if you can visit the communities that surround, if you can visit the community that surrounds your college, it's extremely important because this isn't just an investment in your education. This is going to be an investment of, of you. And so for the next four to six years, if you visit that community, you spend a night and you're like, this makes me uncomfortable. You need to lock in and hone in on that feeling because there's something there. It's important. So make sure if you can try to visit the communities, talk to some of the people surrounding before you invest wholly in the experience. 
I would say playing off of that visiting the community because of COVID, all colleges and universities have really upped their game with what they have available on their website for virtual tours, um, setting up a virtual appointment to hear about the College of Education. So please do your time, take your time, research. It is quite a distance from Illinois to any of our schools, but you can do this from your laptop computer, you know, in your bedroom. Just dig in and find more because we're offering a lot more for you to find online now. I'll, I'll say I wouldn't, I wouldn't just encourage you to reach out to any one, any number of us or for the schools that you're interested in, I would challenge you to do so. Um, if you want to stand out and in different ways, if, you know, um, having worked with Dave at UNC, I know if you want to go to UNC, send an email to Dave, call Dave, and he'll greet you on campus when you get there. Um, and it, I can, you know, just about say that for any number of these colleagues here is that we want to see you succeed. We want to help you find the right place. Um, and if it's not CC, let me help you find the right place here in Colorado. If it's somewhere in Colorado, that's what I know. And who knows, you know, uh, what Jill knows about Texas and everything else. So just utilize the resources that are ahead of you. We're, we're as friendly as, as it can be, so. And definitely just building off that, ask all questions. Any question that pops in your head, just ask it. That's what we're here for. Um, this is a very intimidating process and you've never been to college for, so how, before, so how do you know? Um, ask questions, anything and everything. You wanna make sure you're, that you're a good fit for this school, but that the school is a good fit for you. So um, definitely ask those questions. There really is no such thing as a stupid question. Absolutely. You know, for everyone who's watching, this really is some of the best advice for your whole process. And I just want to echo as a former college admission counselor and higher education professional, I too found an amazing career path uh, that I didn't see coming. And I can tell you that these admission counselors and admission counselors at all the schools that they do, they love answering the questions. They're here as a resource. So definitely, definitely reach out because um, they are your best guides for you and your family. Well, we've reached the end of our time together tonight, and I just want to say thank you to all of our representatives for not just presenting the facts and figures, but also just the passion and excitement you have for your students' opportunities on, uh, on campus, in the classroom, and in the communities that you represent. Thank you to everyone who watched and taking the time out of your day. We hope this is helping you explore in your college search journey. When you close your window, there's going to be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. And again, this is just one of many sessions being hosted for Illinois students. So we hope you'll sign up for additional sessions. In about a week's time, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other presentation recordings at the same website where you register, strivescan.com slash Illinois. So thank you again, everyone, and best of luck in your college journey. Good night.